millions of vulnerable Americans struggle to get reliable transportation to their medical appointments. That's why I started MedHall. City launched the Impact Fund to invest in both women and entrepreneurs of color like me so I can realize my vision and give everything I've got to my company and my community. I got you. For the love of people, for the love of community, for the love of progress, City. Hey everybody, welcome to the Paley Fest Fall TV Previews. I'm Jim Hall, Chairman West Coast Bureau Chief of TV Guide Magazine. And I'm delighted to be your host for this special conversation celebrating NBC's new drama, Ordinary Joe. And thanks to Paley Fest official card and official sponsor, City, for helping make the event possible. Today, we are thrilled to welcome the members of the gifted cast and creative team of Ordinary Joe. Joining us are executive producers, Russell Friend and Garrett Lerner. Hi, guys. Hey there. Hey. And cast members, James Wolk, who plays Rockstar Joe, Cop Joe, and Nurse Joe. I'm gonna pitch <laughs> EV Journalist Joe soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Natalie Martinez, who plays Amy Kindelin, and Elizabeth Lale, who plays Jenny Banks. Hello. Mm -hmm. And the best friend anybody could have, Charlie Barnett, who plays Eric Payne. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi. Hey. So true. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, Jimmy, talk about getting the script and what your first reactions were, because obviously you're the center of all this. Um, can you tell me what you thought? Yeah, so I um, I first read the script, now it's probably like a year and a half ago, um, because we've been on this journey since before COVID really started. Uh, but when I read the script, I was immediately grabbed by, by the very thing that I think is the crux of the show, which is that what if question. Um, you know, I remember being 21 and, and graduating from college and feeling like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders as to what I was going to choose to do with my life. And I felt like any decision was going to drastically change, you know, where I ended up in my life and who I ended up with. And all these things were just weighing on my mind. We'll cut to, I'm in my thirties now. And, you know, I, I pick up this script and I read it and I was like, Oh my God, this is me. This is this. I totally relate to this. And then I quickly realized that like, I'm not that special in that way. Everyone probably says, oh my God, this is me. I relate to this. And so I got really excited about the idea of being part of a show that, that really spoke to people and, and, and makes people kind of ask questions to themselves and, and have that kind of internal dialogue. And, and it really excited me um, on top of the script just being beautifully crafted and written. Um, so many things about it were, were so exciting to me. R Russell and Garrett, tell me about just the origins of the show and the very easy challenge of creating three worlds right off the bat with multiple versions of characters. Do you want me to jump in? Yeah, I mean, it was, oh, it was so easy. We, well, it was interesting because we, uh, you know, we, we met with, this was a couple of years ago already because we got shut down once for COVID. But we met, we just had a general meeting at, at 20th uh, TV and, you know, we were talking about just developing and we pitched them some ideas and they pitched us a couple ideas and they, actually gave us a script that Matt Reeves had written, I don't know, about 10 years earlier. And it was Ordinary Joe. And so, you know, Garrett and I went home, we read it. And I remember actually getting a call, like, I don't know, a few hours later from Garrett, who was like, you got to read this. This is actually really good. Um, so I read it. And then uh, I was like, yeah, this is actually really good. <laughs> so we were like, we, we have, you know, we have to do this. And then so we did it, we met with Matt and we met with Rafi Krohn and Adam Cass and his two producers and talked talked about the project and sort of pitched our ideas of it and how to up, update it. And we changed a couple of the Joes, some of the Joes were different. And um, and then, you know, we brought some of our own, obviously personal experiences to it, our own kind of like, what if ordinary Joe moments. Um, and that's really, that was the origin of it. You know, that was really where it came from. And we both, you know, really related to it because it's such a sort of universal concept. Everybody, I think, wonders about, you know, what if I made a different decision? What if I majored in something else? What if I took a different job? What if I met someone else? What if I met this person earlier? You know, all these sort of things that Joe and everybody else, Amy, Jenny, Eric, all sort of deal with. Um, so we just, you know, loved it and took it from there. And I think anybody that watches the pilot, you get really quickly how the three worlds work and jumping back and forth. That's always, you know, as a viewer, you're wondering how am I going to keep track? And I, it didn't throw me at all. Like I was so in right from the get go. 
Okay. But how did you guys do that? Because I'm sure that was a talking point where you're laying this out. Like how, what's the transitions and how do you do that? You yeah, it, start, that? it literally started when we wrote an outline and I gave the first person who read the outline was my mother. And she <laughs> was completely confused, couldn't follow anything. And I said, you know what, let me go into my computer and turn the music Joe text red, the cop Joe text blue and the nurse Joe text green. I gave it back to her and she got it and loved it actually uh, from that point took this idea of a color palette and brought it all the way through. We still use it today on the scripts and we brought it into production. And so every piece of wardrobe is in the certain color palette of the world it's in. Every set we use, the set designer is putting it in the color palette, the cinematography. So it's Inspired a little bit by traffic, not quite as extreme as the Soderbergh movie, but still you're oriented subconsciously, hopefully. We don't want the viewer to be going red, blue, green, red, blue, blue, green. But we do want them one second into the new scene to know which world they're in. And, uh, you know, it was our greatest concern when we entered into production, but it seems like we pulled it off. And talk about playing the three versions of Joe and each Joe has had different things happen to him. There's different weights of the world on their shoulders. Um, can you talk about how you approach it as the actor, like between each character, do you see them as different or is it just another shade of the same person? How do you see it? Yeah. So, you know, from when Joe was born until he was about 21, when we meet him at the opening of the pilot, it's all one guy, you know, same kind of background, same things happen to him. And then the way that I kind of worked with the characters were after he's 21 and he makes one decision to go uh, to the beach with uh, Jenny, his kind of college friend and girlfriend, and, and another decision he chooses to uh, go on a date with Amy, who he meets at graduation. And then in a third decision, you know, he, he chooses to go ahead and go back with his uncle and his mom and go to dinner and kind of fall back into his father's footsteps. So at that point, I started to build different given circumstances for the characters. I really feel like that's the way I usually approach my work is what are the external pressures that mold us and shape us? And so then I just kind of started kind of molding and shaping these guys based on, on the worlds that they were living in. And, and then that really just started to change them. So Joe is one guy. He's the same guy in all worlds. He's not drastically different, but different things have happened to him and kind of brought out different colors of his personality and different traits that he has. Okay. And of course, you're not the only one who is playing different versions. Everybody is really. Um, mm -hmm. Can everybody else talk to that? Um, Elizabeth, I'll start with you. How, how are you approaching playing different shades of Jenny? Because again, like I saw the pilot and you see her very different in whichever world you're in. Yeah, it's very similar to Jimmy. Um, but I, I, I have noticed with Jenny, there are kind of levels to her her ability to speak for herself and stand up for herself and the kind of like power stance that she inhabits in each world is, is, is based off of uh, the priorities in that world, uh, whether it's her career or her job um, or her children, which is major priority. But I, I agree with Jimmy that she's, she's essentially the same person just just with a different life experience for about 10 years or so, which is, which is a pretty big chunk. And you don't realize, or perhaps you do, you know, if you're doing the work on yourself, like how each year of your life, you're kind of building these traits and strengths and weaknesses and, and how they manifest in your ability to have healthy relationships with everyone in your life. Um, so it's been very confronting um, it, and, and, and very helpful. <laughs> and, and Natalie, Amy comes up, depending on which line you're in, Amy could be the one that got away or she's the one that, that's with Joe. Can yeah. you talk about playing those different sides as well? Yes, and I'm also with Charlie. <laughs> so <laughs> that's right, that's right. It could be, you know, it, it all kind of depends on the life choices that we make. Like, you know, I, I think that's one of the biggest topics or things you're going to hear us say. And that's what life is. It's all based on the choices you make, really show you the outcome of, you know, where you're at in that moment in life, whether it's the work that you do, the choices that you make. And, you know, 
I can very easily be that girl that slipped away or we're married and doing everything that we love to do. And then I think what's really cool about the show that it's just not about that. It's also shows you like, you know, there's also a thing called fate and it puts into perspective, like maybe there's things that no matter what you choose are still going to come your way. You know, uh, there's a saying in Spanish, which means what's for, what's for you is going to be for you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also a really interesting kind of way of looking at this show because it's really cool to see how the lives kind of intertwine and kind of move and go um and how things are can you say it again it's a it's a it's a song by willie chirino but um so yeah i think it's really interesting when i first got the script i mean that's one of the things that kind of really stood out for me and i thought was really cool because you got to see the lives based after the decisions you made, whether they're out of love, passion, loyalty, or, you know, you got to see how they're also kind of intertwined and connected, how you still run into that person, you know, how we still see each other, how our lives still kind of, uh, and, and, you know, kind of like a web, you know, we kind of still interact. And I think it's really kind of cool and such a great script to be able to play, you know, the same character initially, but in three different lives. Mm. I think piggybacking off of that and, and everything that everyone's saying, it's, What's really interesting, too, is that there are so many inlets to this story and to these people's relationships and this journey of choices. I mean, obviously, from a place of uh, as an audience member, you can relate to it. But I'm really fascinated from the outside scope, too, of looking at it from, oh, hey, these could be possibilities in my life. But here's where I am right now. And this is why I'm finding comfort in it. And this is why I find solace in this life, in this moment screw the other options. I'm proud to be here. And in each one of these experiences, I think each one of these people are living in it. Um, but just off piggybacking off of that too, how fascinating life can be in that way that we all maybe as humans relate so much more than we actually acknowledge or understand. And that circumstance, relationships, environment, life, all of those things play such a major part on who you become and the directions that you take. And even as simple as like, hey, this day I took this route to the grocery store. Yesterday I took that route and this happened. Those small little beats that can lead to something, um, I mean, incredibly life changing, you know, I mean, as, as drastic as, hey, I went this way and I got in a car accident or, hey, I went this way and I won the lottery um, or, hey, I went this way and nothing happened. <laughs> uh, <laughs> things that we all as people find fascinating, but the relations to each other are what's I, for all of us, and I, I'm, maybe I'm speaking just for myself, but are, are just so uh, thrilling to explore. Mm -hmm. Char Charlie, let me stay on you for a second. As far as Eric goes, mm -hmm. the relationship between Eric and Joe, how is it different or maybe more strained in each timeline? Are there, are there complications that will arise in different ones that don't in others? I hope so. I mean, like, I think like any relationship, there's strains <laughs> and, you know, I will admit we, we are in, um, it's, it's a complicated world and we have so many, so many layers and so many pizzas, as I'm talking about that, I think want to be seen. So how much are we going to explore those worlds? I don't know, but I know that for Jimmy and I, those were, we've been friends since kindergarten. So those relationship balances have come up and down. You know, personally for me, Jimmy in one of the worlds, he's a cop. And I, as a person of color, am really interested in exploring that relationship between the two of them. Um, I don't think that it necessarily needs to be strife. You know what I mean? I think that there's something really uh, incredible that we can find with it from the connection that they've had and they've built. But I, I like any relationship, you know, in one world, Jimmy is a, is a powerful celebrity you know, musician who is killing it. And I'm a single dad trying to figure out what the fuck to do next. You know, I think those weights of, uh, of status and power within a relationship absolutely play a big part. In one of the worlds where I'm married to Amy, I definitely have more confidence and control. I'm a chef. Um, she is my ride or die and definitely ups me. And I think I have more power than Jimmy in that world where he's a nurse. I think it's, um, I think, I think the audience is going to find that really fascinating seeing how each one of us play, even though we are the same people and working on the same lines, the degrees of power control, uh, yeah, all that stuff is going to be really interesting to see. Really quick on that. One of the things you just said is how the audience is going to be able to like really follow these stories. I think that was really interesting because me watching the pilot, I was like, oh my God, I'm rooting 
for, you know, I'm rooting for Joe and Jenny, you know, and then I'm rooting for like different characters and different storylines. And it's kind of cool because you get to be like, you know, you really want their marriage to work, but then you really want our marriage to work, but then you really want the, their dating life. Like there, there's the, so many sparks, like you see so, so much hope in a new relationship that you really get torn because you kind of end up rooting for all the different lives for by some end, reason. By the end of the pilot, I'm, I'm a big fan of Rick and Morty. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but within Rick and Morty, they have, you know, it's open world. There's 90 billion universes. All the Ricks and Mortys exist in different elements and different lives. So all of them are possible. And that's what I, I left a pilot feeling like, okay, it's cool. It's just Rick and Morty rules. Like Joe is existing. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm happy for him with the world where he left with Jenny. I'm happy for the world where he left with Amy. He's friends with me and all of them. So I'm good. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, We have a question from our festival sponsor, City. Has the inventive storyline of Ordinary Joe led you to reconsider the universal question of what if in your own lives? Um, have you thought about, you know, hey, what if I didn't become an actor? Or what if I didn't do this? Has, have you guys been like going down those rabbit holes so much in your mind? Anybody? All my life. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Absolutely. I know I have. That's why I said it's confronting. <laughs> but kind of on to Charlie's point, the, the truth is like, no matter where you are, like in your presence, if you can kind of like connect to that gratitude, which I think in each of these worlds, we, we see, you know, what Joe and the rest of the characters are, are grateful for inside of that world, despite like the status and how we're defined by our jobs. And that's another thing like that I think about, oh God, and this happened during COVID, like how defined are we by our careers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. way too much way too much <laughs> um and yeah and this show kind of forces you to kind of like dig deep and and get down to what's your core outside of all this mm -hmm. you know excess i mean i wanted to be a doula so i mean i think about that all the time <laughs> my life is completely gone in two totally different spectrums of the world you know <laughs> so these questions, I think it's going to be very, very common. This show is definitely going to be a table talk conversation type show. I um, I remember when I was making the decision. So I was graduating college and I was like, I don't know if I can be an actor. Like who can you make money as an actor? This seems like a very hard thing to do. And I was like, well, maybe I'll go to grad school. So I, um, I ended up pursuing acting and I really felt like I was choosing my career and my passion over staying back kind of in my hometown and my family. And so that was like, you know, choosing passion over family. But then the interesting thing is, is that uh, one of the first jobs I got led to me meeting my wife, just happenstance, and then our two children. So actually the choosing the career led back to the family. And so it's interesting how it's that's like, cool. people write, like it, it splits off, but then it can come back. And I think that's what's going to be really interesting in this show, too, is like he chooses passion, he chooses family, he chooses career. But then what does that ultimately mean? Because you're going to keep coming to different forks like it just keeps splitting off like a tree. So mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting thing to, to think about. Charlie, anything you want to add there? Um, I, I was <laughs> fascinated by that. I was like, yeah, that's, that's going to be really cool. I know, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. um, Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, all all of our choices have led us here in this moment right. so thank goodness <laughs> we're all on the right path i'm torn between wanting to start an arugula farm right now <laughs> <laughs> you can do both yeah my partner yeah. at me and he's like I, I i don't i don't know if you'll be able to. <laughs> but in georgia i might be able to you know, I don't mm -hmm. know. that's true J jimmy i have to ask you um you know joe sings in this and one of the lives he's a rock star I, I didn't know if you sang. It, it, tell me about that part of the show. Uh, yeah, so interestingly enough, I should say everyone in the cast sings. This is something that I've noticed. Like everyone at a different point, I, I have heard sing. And everyone is excellent. So I, just <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I sing a lot. It's usually like in the shower and for my kids. She's so and, good. At a certain point, uh, like my wife used to like my singing, and then at a certain point, she's like, "Okay, that's enough of that." So, um, <laughs> I've loved, I have loved the idea that I've gotten to sing in this. Um, you know, there's I, I, quite honestly, I, I got an amazing like vocal coach. Production brought that on, and like 
just kind of helped me sit back into my voice again. And it's been an amazing exploration to, to kind of take that seriously again. Um, and uh, it's been awesome. You know, it's just so cool because each Joe sings like cop Joe sings um, and he has his voice. Music Joe sings and he obviously has a more polished voice and a rock and roll voice. And then Nurse Joe sings and he kind of reminds me more of like the way I sing. He's usually singing like with his kids. And so there's less of a performative aspect to Nurse Joe, more of a kind of just connecting with what music means to him and his family. So I love the exploration of music in this show. And it's it's really fun to, to be able to do that. OK, um, really quick on his music. I'm, I fangirled out after the the <laughs> the pilot. It really adds such a warm tone to the show. And it really, you know, when you watch something and then they cue the right music in and then you just start gushing tears. That's what you're going to get on the show. <laughs> and, Joe, <laughs> and Jimmy does such a great job of embodying that. I remember when we when I saw the pilot and I first saw him perform and I'm like, oh, this is going to be a hit. This, we're good. We're good. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> this is going to be great. I was like, done, sold. Sign me up. <laughs> performance element is, is, is one of the strongest. Like Jimmy is incredible. He sounds great. Don't let him diminish that. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to let you diminish that, okay? Yeah. He's a good singer. <laughs> that, like, remember, we all remember when we were there in Chicago in that weird kind of space. And Jimmy, you literally electrified the room. It is, it is, it's good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to ask Garrett and Russell, you know, you've got these three worlds you know, assuming the show lives a long life, do you already have kind of other worlds you want to dip into or would that be off the table? Like, are these our three worlds for the whole series or is there a chance he could be TV journalist, Joe? I'm, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling for that one. But, <laughs> but can you talk about that? Is that something you guys have talked about all this early? I mean, yeah, we, we definitely have. We think, yeah, obviously the three worlds, we have a lot to sort of keep track of. And there's, you know, we love the sort of similarities between the worlds, the differences between the worlds the crossover between the worlds, you know, all that stuff. So that's what we're sort of focused on now. But what we, what we plan on doing definitely is like, obviously it's called Ordinary Joe, but we want to make sure we have, you know, uh, that it's an ensemble, you know? So as we get, you know, further into the season, we can sort of like, one, and once sort of audiences are comfortable with the concept of switching between worlds and they, they get, oh, this Natalie, is over there and Elizabeth and Charlie and they understand all the characters, we're really expanding those worlds as well. So we have really complicated and, you know, we think emotional and, you know, good stories for Amy, Jenny and Eric, you know, that really blossom as we go through the season. And as we get into our plan is like further seasons to really make it. Yeah. Like everybody has more stuff, all this other stuff going on, but hopefully it'll still be contained within these three worlds. Like, because we are concerned about making it too confusing. You know, if we start adding other people <laughs> and other timelines or whatever, it gets like crazy. Like if you watch Doctor Who, like if you know, or, or Rick and Morty, it's like, it could be yeah. bonkers. <laughs> so we're yeah. hoping to keep it more grounded than that, you know, and keep it really emotional and character based. Um, so I, I think, I hope that answered the question. But, yeah. and also just talking about Jimmy singing, it is, it is great. And we're, we're making him sing a lot in this show, actually. <laughs> make it work a lot. Uh, but it's so great because it does add this incredible uh, emotion to the show that it's it's hard to get that any other way. Like Garrett and I have been lucky. Like we worked on a couple. Well, on, we worked on the show House, and Hugh Laurie was is a musician, so we we had him play and he played the piano and sang. Then we were on Glee and on the show Rise. All those mu they were all musicals, and it really helped us get get a little bit of a footing into that world and understand you know that the music the effect music can have. And especially like if it's live music, like sometimes Jimmy will sing live on set and it's just, it's just amazing. I mean, I just think it's just like adds this whole other layer of uh, emotion and feeling and it's just, it's just great. So we're using, we're definitely using that a lot. And like Jimmy said, like all three worlds he sings and, you know, in, in all three worlds too, he has, there's, there's a son that he's had and he's also musical. Uh, and like you said, and Jenny sings. So we have Jenny singing and, uh we'll get amy singing we talked about that and eric you know <laughs> we're gonna get you singing it's a matter of time you'll find you'll find eric and i at the karaoke bar <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but let me ask you guys this um i think we have time for one more question um because people have different looks in the in the versions like joe has a beard when he's a rocker and charlie's sporting a nice mustache right now mm -hmm. um can you talk about how does that work are you shooting 
each timeline kind of in a group or is it just a lot of like quick hair and makeup kind of thing? Um, yeah. Jimmy, talk about your beard first of all. <laughs> Tell me how that experience has been because can you grow it just like that? He loves it. Jimmy, yeah, it's his favorite beard? part of the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, if I if I eat like strawberries, it grows really fast. So they give me <laughs> strawberries in the afternoon. And then it's, it's game time. Um, the beard is is unbelievable, actually. Uh, the process of putting it on, like, not my favorite thing in the entire world, but <laughs> the man who puts it on is amazing. This guy Michael Smithson, and he's lovely, and he's a real artist, and he really just, you know, it's like sculpted. Um, it's a, just an amazing process. You know, it's almost like it's like I'm his palette, and they he paints my face with this. He just, it's great. Like the hair and makeup team is amazing. And, um, you know, the, the producers and, uh, have been so great in trying to keep, I think one character for as long as they can each day. Um, but you know, you run up against the production constraints because you have to make a show and however many days you have to make a show. And so sometimes there is switching at lunch. And, um, I think that'll be the thing that we all just develop a muscle for on this show is making those, those shifts and those changes. But, um, but back to your question, the beard is unbelievable because when I look in the mirror, sometimes I forget that it's not mine and I'll put my hand up and then hair will come off. But um, it's, it's really good. It's an amazing <laughs> yeah, process. I think the beard needs its own number on the call sheet. Oh yeah, the beard, <laughs> yeah. the beard is number one on the call sheet. <laughs> I, think, I think it needs its own number for sure, but it's really yeah. good. Yeah, and Charlie has, one, Charlie, don't you have a beard in one of the characters? I do. I have a beard. I lose this and get... I can't. Got, we filmed this. Remember, the pilot was... what? Uh, yeah. Chef Eric has a beard. But Chef Eric has a full beard. And then I have something else. I think I have like a goatee or like a something here. I can't remember. Full patch. Yeah, full patch or something. But this also... <laughs> past like just our facial hair and, and, you know, that world, but to our costumes too. I mean, I know for our costume team, just picking all the worlds and all the different colors and stuff. It's, it's really, it's, it's interesting to see like from the crew side, how, how much more of an effort you have to do to put in for three different characters, even like actors, um, which I've been kind of fascinated with in the pre-production side of it. But Jimmy's beard looks, I mean, mine too. He's got a, <laughs> uh, we have a crack hair and makeup team and, and costume department because they really are doing a beautiful job of, of really supporting us to find these characters and, and you know, really helps you feel like the character once they, they do these changeovers. They're incredible. And Elizabeth and Natalie's the same thing, not, not facial hair, but as far as like hair or how you're, how you would It depends how far hair. back we go in my story. Little Latin Natalie with a little mustache. <laughs> 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 so it depends how back we go in my back story. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad like the boys are having to go through some, some tough, <laughs> some tough hair because us yeah. females are in the chair for a very long time and have always yeah. been in the chair for a very long right. time. So welcome. <laughs> Welcome to our world. I think, I think with my biggest thing with, and I think with all of us as well, is finding those little intricacies that make each character kind of different. So, you know, we do have this great hair and makeup team and wardrobe and the writers creating these worlds and, you know, set design and the, you know, DP and everything with the color and the hues, you know, and it also falls on us to kind of find and complement that with our little intricacies, you know? those little decisions that made me maybe a little more sour at life or maybe a little happier at life, maybe a little bit more positive in life. Those choices that really kind of shift your way of thinking and dealing with certain things. And like Jenny said, those things that shifted us in having healthy relationships as opposed to toxic relationships or, you know, being able to communicate and not communicate. So, you know, I think everything kind of when you put it together really helped build this world that these lovely men here have just written for us, <laughs> you know, so it's kind of, Great. Great. Well, congratulations, you guys. Everybody, thank you for joining us for this special Paley Fest Fall TV previews conversation with members of the cast and creative team behind NBC's Ordinary Joe, which premieres at 10 p.m. on Monday, September 20th. So make sure to watch. And thanks to Paley Fest's official card and official sponsor, City. You can learn more about the Paley Center by visiting paleycenter.org. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.